Hey guys. Anybody out there? How's everybody doing tonight? So I thought I'd show up. I said I would be here and I don't like to go back on my word. Let me just turn off this music here. So a couple interesting things I wanted to point out. Got to bear with me, guys. I'm not used to... music yet here we go this jam is pretty good though okay there we go all right so here i am inside the court so a few things i wanted to talk about today first of all oj simpson passed away in case nobody heard i like to always check and see what's going on twitter because that's where everything is always kind of like the breaking news you know and for me i find it's the most um i don't know i feel like that's where you get a lot of different voices. You can see a lot of different things. Anyway, OJ Simpson died, guys. He's gone. So, and of course, I immediately went to see what Megyn Kelly was was going to say because if you know, you know. But anyway, so let's talk about the rock star in the room yesterday from the court proceedings. I know anybody that was in my chat last night when we were watching it, I mentioned Elisa Mazoth. I had done a video on her prior. It's in my playlist. When people were complaining that, you know, Brian Koberger's defense team sucks and we should raise money to get him a better attorney, um, you know, I was. I mean, I didn't really know what I, how I felt about Ann Taylor. I looked at, up her litigation history and, you know, she seems like someone who believes in what she's doing, but she's a defense attorney for the, a public defender, right? So I get it. Uh, but I did look into the other two, which is Jay Logsdon, who I personally think is a rebel. Um, just if you look at him, he looks like a rebel. And then his arguments are sort of like unusual, which I like. He has different takes. He thinks outside the box and he doesn't have a problem presenting sort of these unusual arguments. And I think that's important when you're uh, defending people. And this is how new precedents get made. So I admire that about him. But Elisa Mazoth, the woman who um, showed up yesterday, in case no one knew about her before, she's the real MVP here. She's a trial attorney. She works for her own private firm. And she that is somebody who Anne brought on the team. She's been on the team for quite a while. And, you know, I guess they get a certain amount of money to um, utilize for their defense. And Anne is smart enough to know that she needed a good trial attorney. Hi, Christopher Cooper. Hi, how are you? So um, when I did the deep dive on her, I don't know, maybe six months back, I saw that. And, I, and so I did a video about it. Um, she is uh, an attorney who overturned a murder conviction. And I, I talked about that in the video as well. Um, there was a man who was falsely accused and long story short was convicted and she was able to have that overturned. So I think we saw yesterday in the courtroom that she, it means business. She stands on business. She means business. And, uh, you know, it, for me, it was excellent because when I watched the court proceedings up until this point, I feel like I'm on set in the movie, My Cousin Vinny. And, you know, Bill Thompson, he's under the impression that he's the judge and the judge is also under that impression. And it's just very frustrating to me. And Ann Taylor, like I said before, is treated sort of like the redheaded stepchild. And I get it. Defense attorneys aren't well liked. But guess what, guys? We need them. And I believe her heart is in the right place. Could I be wrong? Sure. People fool me. But generally, they don't. Anyway, Elisa Mazoth, she schooled Judge Judge yesterday, in my opinion, and, you know, basically let him know, hey, you can't just throw out these questions that are you're calling false, which I, have a, I keep saying this is just words matter. Questions can't be false, right? A question is a question. 
it's not a statement. So, you know, the judge doesn't understand st statistical analysis, right? And I made a comment on Andrea Burkhart's channel. I really enjoy her analysis on this. It doesn't give me um, high blood pressure to watch her because she's just, she's a defense attorney and she's brilliant. So her, if you guys don't follow her, she's a great person to follow for actual legal analysis because I'm not an attorney. Uh, but I did watch her and I made a comment saying it blew my mind that um, basically, you know, this judge doesn't understand statistical analysis, right? And because I, I guess I assume that um, judges have to take statistics. I don't know. I took statistics in college for my major, but uh, Andrea said back to me that, you know, that's, I guess, a running joke that lawyers are lawyers because they couldn't be doctors because they're not good at math. So I didn't know that. And so I, I guess I have to be more great, have more grace in these things. I try not to be too judgmental. Um, and I, I really do. I try to give grace, but it, it was just too much with, with the whole theatrics with Bill Thompson the other day, you know, the hands in the air and, and he just gets so worked up and, and the false accusations, I'm sorry, but they did not, they did not violate the non-dissemination order. And to me, the fact that, you know, the judge doesn't even know his own non-dissemination order and then tries to throw it back on Anne saying, well, and, and Bill too, both of them, you know, to me, it's victim blaming. Judge, if you don't know what your own non-dissemination order is or what it means, that's your fault. You need to make it more specific. When you are taking someone's First Amendment right away to speak on something, then you have to narrowly tailor that. You can't just be, quote, willy-nilly to use the term that Bill Thompson likes to use. So I'm just going to take a look at chat for a second. Um, oh, hi, Jeff H. Feels like the judge walks on eggshells around Ann. Is he too concerned about doing anything that will end up in appeal? Uh not possible that some potential jurors out there have never seen the PCA. Not everyone is on YouTube. Um, no, I agree. You're right, Jeff. It's a hundred percent. There's people out there, right? Hello, dang it, Nancy. Hello, beautiful. So here, so here's, here's what I've, I've gathered from this. And honestly, this was my opinion before I listened to some legal analysis and I try to listen to both sides. So if you, if you want in my opinion, you want good, balanced, you know, um, legal analysis, you can go to Emily D. Baker, who's awesome, and she's a former prosecutor. So you're going to get the prosecution side of what they think about this. And then you can go over to Andrea Burkhart, who's a defense attorney, and you're going to get her take, right? I have my own opinion on it, as we all do, and we all should. And I'm not trying to sway anyone's opinion. But this is that's why I'm on YouTube, because I do have a strong opinion about this. And absolutely, there are people that don't know anything about this case. As it turns out, what they found out with the survey, at least, is 97 percent of the people in that county have heard about this case. They are aware of this case. And in terms of the PCA, right, in terms of the PCA, no, I, I seriously doubt other than people like us who are totally nerdy about this stuff and dissecting it, they're not going and looking at the PCA and reading it. However, the news media does that for them. They get, they get the PCA and they read it and then they extract from it and they have commentary on it, just like we do on YouTube. Now on YouTube, lots of us, me not so much, hopefully I try to stick with mostly facts. I do a little like unique takes on stuff, but I try to make sure it's out, you know, allegedly, whatever. But in the news media, they just follow the PCA and they extract upon, expound upon it. And that's all they did in the PCA. And so if you listen to the trial yesterday, what you can gather from the expert when he finally was able to talk is that they have reasons for why they have rules as to how they do these surveys. And, and they've been doing them for decades. And in fact, the Supreme Court ruled on this as well. And Eliza Mazoff, again, like LeBron James over here in the court, she told the judge, like, the Supreme Court's ruled on this. You have to include false uh, false statements in these surveys. You have to. That's the whole point of the survey. Find out what 
what people know and based on what they what they know or heard what what's their opinion and it turns out in latel county 80 percent of the people who knew about these things felt that the defendant's guilty so it's not a good county um made a shoot uh edelman made a shoot yourself in the foot argument with the star wars metaphor if you asked did you know that darth vader is luke skywalker's father that just spoiled it for the person <laughs> okay i mean well let's talk about the mandela effect if we're going to talk about luke i'm your father you guys know about the mandela effect i'm sure right all right i can't get distracted i that's this is what i do um no i i mean i think edelman was rightly so um feeling that uh he, i mean bill thompson highly emotional man and i think he is used to using his he has the, his tactics are basically being a bully let's face it he's a bully that's how he he you know um gets what he wants and that might work with the judge who thinks everything's funny for some reason he's got this smile on his face whoever if he is a pr person or a wife or someone who cares about him they should probably let him know don't smile so much because it comes off insensitive that's my opinion i don't know what do you guys think what do you guys think? am i being too hard on this judge um bill thompson is a bully he's very smart he's a very good prosecutor and he's trying to pull a snow job on people and that's my opinion he knows darn well that the survey is fine no non-dissemination order was uh violated but that's just my opinion guys so i don't know uh i'm just saying El eliza mazoth i mean she was a queen yesterday she really was I, she went in there and she demanded respect hi 12 gauge she was just queen of the courtroom like i just picture her with those glasses coming down and the blunt you know and the music playing that was like that's her yesterday i mean she just she schooled them she commanded respect and that's in that courtroom and the judge wasn't smiling after that so you know and i and bill thompson's just sitting there like with his head like that probably trying not to like have his head explode or something is my guess so yeah i, I thought that was great yes yeah, superstar and she's the trial attorney she is the one who's going to be doing the trial right it's not ann i mean ann may take over on some days or something or jay but my impression is you know that's why she was brought on the team she's the trial attorney that's what she does. She's good at it. Clearly, she doesn't mince her words. She knows how to say what she means, and she knows how to say it very, very clearly without all the fluff and and all the theatrics that that Bill Thompson likes to bring into it. You know, he's playing the the, the kind of like old podunk attorney. Well, in Lake Talk County, that's what's good for us. Well, you still live in America. You still live in America, Bill. And guess what? The Constitution still applies even in Lake Talk County even in Leetuck County. So, so what's interesting, what I found most interesting, and I'm curious what you guys found most interesting, right? Is the stalking, the stalking, right? So I was so curious all this time where the stalking came from, okay? Um, the media has been reporting on it. And, you know, I've tried to find evidence of it in all kinds of places using my own OSINT skills and everything else. And I couldn't find it, but it's just been put out there time and again, that he stalked the victims. Even Mr. Gonsalves has said he stalked the victims. I remember one video, I'm sorry, one interview where he said, you know, they, I wish the house was there because I'd really like people to see where he was when he was looking, what was he doing for that time while he was there, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And so I was really wondering where is, where is this from? And so one of the things that I think, um, attorney Mazoth sort of illuminated for me was that was extracted once again from the PCA because people, this is the leap that people made. The leap that was made was that because, right, because, because, he his phone his phone pinged at a tower near their home 
on 12 separate occasions, that means that he, that he was around their house, right? And so that equates to stalking, guys. That's that's where that came from. And that is just I mean, come on. Really? Your phone pinged 12 times? Now, granted, it's because it was late at night. Some people are night owls. Some people are insomniacs. Some people have lots of things to do during the day, go to school, study, or TAs, et cetera, and then go to the supermarket in another town late at night. Is it possible he was stalking them? Sure, but I guess not, really, because guess what? Didn't we hear Bill Thompson angrily testify? Well, not testify, but in court, go after Dr. Edelman and say that that question, again, the question was false, him stalking false, right? Wasn't there a claim of Brian touching their Wi-Fi? Right, Jeff H. So I cannot find, and if you can, I'd be happy to look at it, honestly. I mean, I, I know I'm not attached either way here, if he's guilty or innocent, I'm just not because this case has so many inconsistencies and that's one of the reasons why it's, it's so interesting. Right. And I say that, and now I'm going to say that, um, there were four lives lost and I don't want to forget that because here I am going on and on and on and there were four lives lost. Right. And so I don't want to forget that in all of this. OK. Um, but I think this case is very it's blown up because. Right. I think it's blown up because of all these inconsistencies. So, yeah, the, the touching his Wi-Fi. I know Steve Gonzalez said it in an interview, which if if he's a credible source. Right. Which he could. I don't know if he's a credible source. Did he get that from law enforcement? Um. So what are you guys saying over here? Um, I think it had something to do with a Bluetooth speaker, maybe that big JBL speaker we see in the video. Right. So, you know, if someone, you know, in your house, someone can can sort of attach to your Wi-Fi if it's not password protected, which maybe theirs isn't. And let's say he knows someone in the neighborhood. Right. Or maybe he did attach to it, but I don't know. I don't have any solid proof, I guess is what I'm saying. And and I don't know if anybody does. And so without solid proof, what it doesn't really mean anything to me at this point. And then once again, when Edelman, Dr. Edelman and Bill went back and forth, Bill suddenly is very concerned about Brian's, you know, welfare in terms of this. Let's let's be honest, he doesn't care, but you know, you're putting out these statements about him stalking and that's false. That's false. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for letting us know that the stalking piece is not going to be used at trial and that it's false, meaning they don't have any evidence for it. Right, guys? I mean, that's what it means to me. What do you think? It's, to me, that means they don't have evidence that will prove at trial that he stalked the victims. Right? That's what it means to me. So that also means to me, you know, these rumors about um, Kaylee being stalked and perhaps Brian and Brent Kopaka were the stalkers. That throws that out the window, too, because if he wasn't stalking her, he was. not And I'm not saying Brent Kopaka by any means is involved in this. I'm just saying if you're following all of these different avenues that that are presented. Right. Um, I think it's all just coincidence. There's a lot of coincidence with Koberger and this crime. His education from DeSales sure makes me ponder on his mindset and focus. Uh, 12 gauge. It does sound like they do. They do just others correlated that together. Right. And, and that's what happens. So DeSales, that's an interesting um, statement there, Jeff. You want to expound on it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, DeSales, I mean, the whole Catherine Ramslin situation. I don't know. If, I mean, I kept hearing her name. And, okay, she's this, you know, um, well-known um, criminologist. 
and I'm probably not even using what she is correctly. She wrote a whole article about what she really is because people were mislabeling it. But um, uh, if you look into her, she's kind of an interesting character as far as I'm concerned. Um, and she thought very highly of Brian. She thought very highly of him. And she wrote him a letter of recommendation, which from what I heard, again, I don't remember where I heard this, but that's how one of the reasons he got into the PhD program. Good grades are not the only thing that will get you into a doctorate program if you've ever tried to apply to one. I mean, you need strong letters of recommendation. So she's one of the reasons he got in there as far as I know. <clears throat> And so um, she is my, I think I'm out of the loop on that question. <laughs> 12 gauge. I don't know who's your baby mama. <laughs> um, okay. So next point of interest that I wanted to bring up guys. All right. So the stalking. All right. Bill Thompson out of his own mouth says no stalking, no stalking, no stalking. Okay. So. Can we believe him? He's the prosecutor. I want to talk about the Garrett discovery and I'm going to bring up forensic frenzy again. If you guys aren't following her, I highly recommend you follow her. She is, um, she has a degree in forensics and she is a uh, person who is very bright and has integrity as far as I'm concerned and is also not attached to guilt or innocence. Um, she does get some some stuff from people who will call them pro burgers who don't want to believe for a second that Brian may have committed these crimes because some of the things that she points out point to the fact that this is how, you know, th that perhaps he did. She doesn't say that. She's just presenting data because she goes through and combs through the timelines and all the evidence that's been put out in the public record. And it's tedious work. I personally wouldn't want to do it and she does it and she does an excellent job and she presents it really clearly. After I listen to one, one of her um, videos, I feel like I'm in, I've been in class. Like I just had a lecture from like a professor. She's really good, but she brought up something super interesting yesterday. Have you guys heard about the Garrett discovery? Anybody? All right. Let me just show you here. If you haven't oh, over here, whoops, let me share. Feels to me that Anne wants a change of venue. Yeah. All right. Let me say this one other thing, Jeff and, and um, 12 gauge. Anybody else who's in here in the chat, change of venue. One thing to consider. Okay. Um, in terms of this change of venue, right. Is this, if they allow, if the judge, allows the defense team to continue with their survey, right? Which honestly, unless they can replicate it, a scientific process in order to compare in a statistical analysis, it has to be the same. They can't take some questions out and try to compare that way. It's you, you have to start all over again from scratch. So the, fa the fastest way forward and the way that that is done everywhere else Okay. Um, and that is accepted everywhere else with these types of questions in high profile cases. Okay. Is to do the questionnaire Dr. Edelman made. If, if they allow him to now do that questionnaire in surrounding counties in Idaho and they find out that, you know what, in this county and that county and the other county, they also feel 80% that Brian Koberger is guilty. Well, guess what? They're not going to move the trial. It's going to stay in Lata County. So it, you know, I don't know that it's fair to say that the defense wants it out of Lata County. What the defense wants is to find out the best place for their client to be tried. And they have to do that. If they don't, if they didn't do this survey, which, by the way, the survey is is the survey that they do everywhere else in high profile cases. These types of questions, these types of questions, right? There's a way to do these questions. Um, if you look up in a in these 
if you go to like, I'm sure these survey people, Dr. Edelman, there's these social scientists, they've tested this stuff over and over again for selection bias and, and, you know, demographics and all these things. If you look into statistics at all, if you've ever done any research at all, it's very specific. That's why they do it this way and it's accepted. So if they didn't do it this way, she would be, Brian could then go back and say, I didn't have effective counsel. They didn't even do a survey. And the survey that they did, they let the prosecutor and the judge pick out the questions. So you, you can't, you can't bash the defense for doing what they're supposed to do. So the surveys, they, the judge really, in my opinion, and hopefully will just let them do the surveys in the other surrounding counties. And it, it may be that they find out that guess what? Like everybody in the state of Idaho or the surrounding counties also think the guy's guilty. And so you're just going to have to keep in Latel County, right? It's about certain words that bring the memories out of the media. Yeah. I mean, out of the 400 people surveyed, I had never read the PC and now know things they didn't know before that phone call. Jeff, I, I that, I, I that's, I don't know if that's not very specific. 400 people serve of the 400 people. I feel like I'm missing a part of that sentence, Jeff, because 400 people surveyed. So you're saying that 400 of the people surveyed of all of them, not one of them had ever. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I don't know that not one of them had read the PCA, but my point and and Dr. Edelman's point, and really the point, is that it doesn't matter if they actually read the PCA. That's not the point. The point is that the, the, the information that's in the PCA was commentated on by various news media outlets. And those media outlets can make leaps and bounds, like Brian Koberger stalking the victims which we not now find out is false. It's false. And so the prosecution is mad because their PCA allows the media to extract these things and make these things and say these things. And then the, the defense wants to survey people to find out how that affects their feelings, their guilt and innocence. And they're saying, no, you, you can't do that though. No, this is America. This is America. <laughs> Number one, the media can do what they want. They can say what they want. Now they might get in trouble if they say really dumb things that are completely outlandish. You know, they might get sued in other words, but they're allowed to do that. This is where we live, guys. I mean, this is America, right? So, but this is the interesting part. This is, if you guys don't know about this Garrett discovery, this kind of puts things... And in, on another level, for me, it does anyway. Right? So here, this is the forensic frenzy thing. Garrett discovery. Let me see if I can do this. Presents. I do that. Hopefully that doesn't do anything. Present. Why is it doing that? All right, here we go. View tab and then view in. I'm really having a hard time here, guys. All right, here. I'm going to do stop sharing and start it all over again. All right, here we go. Did you notice there wasn't very many questions? Like all the info they were checking for. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting, the questions. And honestly, if you think about the questions, right? If you think about the questions, they were really based on questions from the PCA or not direct, not all of them, not all of them. Like it doesn't say he stalked the victims, but if you consider that it says, you know, his phone pinged on several different occasions, right? I would have never made that leap. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I'm not going to look. And to me, the fact that his phone pinged there, it's not even enough information for me to make any meaningful judgment. That's my opinion. I would need to know more what that means. Pinging on a tower in that location really doesn't mean a whole lot. I want the cell phone expert to tell me exactly what that means. 
And so for the news to make that based on that it is that's insane to me. Not for the news, not the news, because the news, I shouldn't be shocked by that. But for anybody to make that kind of claim, I think is is that's a huge leap to make. Um, let's see. Out of the 400 people, how many knew little about the case till that phone call? They listened and then boom, they're no longer eligible because they know too much. They never want me in a jury. Well, I believe that they never want you on the jury, Jeff. That I believe. <laughs> and don't take offense to that. It's just true. Um, you just said it. But but you have to understand. I don't know if you listened to the hearing, Jeff. They said of the 400 people, right? She said 97%, 97% of those people knew about the hearing. So knew little, I mean, it's like, it's like the Star Wars thing. And I get it. He might've used the wrong reference by giving away the father. Right. But it, it's, it's, you know, tell me about your trip to the Bahamas, you know? Oh, it was great. We, we got off the plane and then we went to this place and then we went to that place and this and that. Well, Oh, you didn't go scuba diving. Oh yeah, we did actually. We went scuba diving. It was a lot of fun. And then you know, this and that. Oh, you didn't. You didn't go. Um, you didn't go to that restaurant I told you about. Oh my gosh, I forgot all about that. You're right. I did go to that restaurant. I mean, th what? This is this is how people are. They're not going to sit there and, and give a dissertation on the phone. Yes, this is what I know. I know this, 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 and this. It's not possible, right? You got to go and load your truck. You did a video shoot today and you're going to interview. Oh, that's awesome, Jeff. All right. Well, I hope I didn't like, you know, I, you know, I hope I didn't offend you in any way. <laughs> I like discourse. I like people to disagree with me. Um, but regardless, I, I can see, I can see there's, I can see that people are, you know, still not buying this survey thing and that that's fair, but I mean, to me, it, it makes sense. I don't know. Um, we'll see what the judge says. I don't know if he made any, um, if he made any, uh, uh, I don't know if he made any judgments yet. Do you guys know at all? I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to check the chat some more, guys. Sorry. I'm, I hope I'm not ignoring anybody. Uh, okay, so. But here, let's talk about this. Um, let me see if I can pull this Garrett discovery up because this thing to me, and I know 12 gauge, you had said yesterday, you have a huge headache. You got a huge headache. We'll be listening, but not watching. Okay. I'm sorry. You have a headache. I know what those are like. I have a history of migraines, so I hope you feel better. Um, so here's the thing, the Garrett discovery. You might be interested in this 12 gauge because I know you said you're in school right now for criminal justice, right? Um, so just in terms of forensics and stuff, this is interesting to me. Here we go. Okay, here we are. So this is the Garrett discovery. Okay, what is Garrett discovery? Well, Garrett discovery is a company and I'm going to read you what they say on their website because I think it's important to know uh, who they are. Essentially, it's a forensics, uh, it's a forensics, digital forensics company. Okay. Oops. Computer forensic exp experts. Okay. Um, they analyze the web. Hit, they can do anal analysis of web history, peer-to-peer -peer history, downloads, pictures, they can do e-discovery. Uh, they have over a decade experience in e-discovery. Um, they've they've um, managed the largest e-discovery practice in the nation um, until 2014 for the Department of Defense, and they've worked with the Department of Justice. Okay, so they have some creds here. Mobile forensics. Experts analyze and report the cell phone in question, usage data, metadata, hard drive storage, images, videos. They can assess videos. Okay. Social media collection. So no, this is where this comes in for Brian Koberger. But 
Uh, social media evidence is a new and rapidly emerging frontier in digital forensics. The trail of digital information on social media, if explored correctly, can offer remarkable support in civil and criminal cases. They have audio forensics. Wow, would I love to get them to evaluate the audio at Linda Lane. I would love it, right? You guys know I did my own Linda Lane audio, just what I heard. People, I think some people think I'm a quack because of that, but I don't really care because what I said I heard is what I heard. Um, I don't know if it's real. I don't know if somebody put that overlaid. It was something else. Who knows? But I would really love, love if Garrett Discovery would do an audio analysis of that and tell us if it's real or not. Uh, but anyway, this is what these people do. They do medical records, EMR, electronic medical records. They do cellular GPS call analysis. Okay. So our customers consist of corporations and government agencies in a wide variety of industries, such as financial and insurance technology, military, energy, and more. Garrett Discovery has performed e-discovery and forensic work at the request of the White House, U.S. Air Force, and Congress. So they're no joke. Garrett Discovery is no joke. It's a reputable com company. They've been around for quite a while. And I just read you who some of the people are that they have done business with. Okay. So this document appeared on the Internet. And it turns out over a year ago, okay, over a year ago, this document, it's a PDF and you can see it right here. And I'm going to go over to it fully and take myself off the screen. All right, here it is, Garrett document. And you can look it up yourself. You can, you can go, you can just type in Google. Um, it's basically, um, Get, you can just type in Garrett Discovery, Brian Koberger, PDF, and it, it should be the first thing that pops up. And you'll get one through 14 pages. And this thing right here, the first thing, all these little dots, I don't know how to interpret that. Okay. I'm sure that someone does, but it's not me. Um, forensic Frenzy May. The next page, when you go down, it says top 10 entities. And then we have ranked by incoming li links and it gives you Instagram usernames and you can see the second name here, affiliation Twitter. And we have the defendant's name, Brian Koberger. You go down here, ranked by outgoing links and we have him as the number one Instagram user. And then they have total links here. And then you can go down to entities by type and it has all of the um, aliases that they found the defendant went by on social media <clears throat> through their software, their software analysis that they utilize. OK, and so I think most of these people already know, you know, it's his name, Brian Koberger, Brian Dot Koberger, Brian Dot Koberger with an extra R, criminology underscore student, Brian Dot Koberger dot Ph.D. and then BK5781. And then uh, he does have, he did have a Twitter account. I don't think it's active anymore. They deactivated it. And then his all trails account, Brian Slight. He had a cash app, Brian Koberger. He has two emails here. And then we have Instagram users, 1,089. I don't know if this is Instagram users he followed, Instagram users he interacted with. I'm not entirely sure, but they're all listed here. Okay. And you can look at the, the names on, the, on here. Okay. And then... Go all the way down to the bottom. And I think, yeah. And then at the end, we also have a few other interesting facts. Two locations, Fairfield, Connecticut, and United States. I don't know why it's not just one, because Fairfield, Connecticut's in the United States. We have a phone number. We have a Reddit user. This is his username that he did the survey that we're aware of. We have his Skype username. We have his Snapchat username. We have his TripAdvisor username, and then we have his Twilio user, and it's a number. But when you look through these Instagram accounts, one of the things that jumped out at me were all of these different languages, okay, Persian, Arabic, Russian, okay, um, really interesting. But then the other thing is... Two of the victims' names are on here, only two. And the two that are on here are Kaylee Jade, which is Kaylee Gonsalves' Instagram, 
and Madison Mogan. That's it. Now, I can't tell based on this if he's following them and they're following him or what the deal is, okay? But he is connected to them based on this PDF from Garrett Discovery. All right, so let's talk about it. So this is why Forensic Frenzy is the bomb because this was out there. She only found it recently. I found it. I found it recently from Justin who is um, on Twitter and YouTube and has been interviewed by Lana of Truth and Transparency. And he has made some pretty interesting claims about the case. If you follow him, he posted it and said that he was the one that um, got this from Carrot Discovery. That may be true. However, Forensic Frenzy tracked this down and was able to find out that this was put out way back in December of 2022. So it's been out there for quite a while. And I don't know anybody that's been talking about it. Maybe they have, and I just haven't watched them, but nobody that I, that I was following. Hi, Brandy. Hello. So it's been out there. Okay. And comments have been made on it, including a comment by the company um, themselves, Garrett Discovery. And Forensic Frenzy decided, well, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know why it's out here. I don't know if it's okay that it's out here because if it is accurate, this could be a potential leak. And do they know about it, right? And so this girl is the bomb, guys, because she just called them up and asked them, like, hey, do you guys know that this is on the internet? Like, what's up with that? <laughs> and... um yeah, she asked them and, and they told her um, essentially that um, we're aware that there is something on the Internet. Um, what are you looking at? And, you know, she she sent it to them. And essentially you can get the story from her. I'm not taking away anything from what she's done. She has broken this up, you know, broken this this part of it but it's you know, I'll break it down just quickly for you is, you know, they told her like, yes, this PDF is from our company. We did this analysis and that is accurate information. Okay. So that's interesting. And so then she said, well, you know, where, like, how did this come to be? And they said inside edition, inside edition, ask them to do it. And they did it. And also CBS asked them to analyze a portion of the grub truck video which is also available on YouTube with a very little amount of people who actually watched it, guys. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Look at this. All right, look at this. Let's go. Uh, whoops. Let me go to, let me stop there. Whoops. Sorry. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you. Cause it's just funny how, with all of us and, and all the places I've looked for things and it's right there on YouTube. Right. Um, let me see. Let me see. Here we go. All right. Let's go here. Whoops. Sorry. I don't want to have a conversation with you right now. All right. So let's do this. Garrett discovery. Grub truck. Let's see if it works. Oh, Jeff H just comes up first. Uh, dum -dum 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 -dum. Hmm. Well, I'm not seeing it right now. Is it possible I'm not looking in the right spot? I'm going to get way too distracted over here. Okay. Um, All right, guys, sorry. I'm not I'm not seeing it over there right now. I'm going to get too distracted if I go down that rabbit hole. Regardless, it apparently it is on you it is on YouTube. And if you look at Forensic Frenzy for this, you'll be able to see um basically that um Garrett Discovery at the request of CBS 
analyzed the grub truck video, the portion right towards the end, right before Maddie and Kaylee leave. They wanted to hear what was being said between Maddie, Kaylee, um, hoodie guy, okay, who I'm still not entirely positive that's Jack S. Maybe it is. That's my point of contention, though. And um, Joe Vito, I think is his name. But anyway, so that's on there. You can kind of hear it. And they didn't hear anything that they thought was, you know, nefarious. But regardless, so yes, Garrett Discovery has been involved by, with two separate media companies asking them to analyze. Now, the important part about that is that um, they did not, um, they did not accept payment from those media companies. They were not, this was not like a transaction where they were paid for this. And so I think that has to do with them being able to be not bound by a gag order. Something like that is what I remember her saying. Regardless, they did it. The information is there. So it's quite interesting to look at it. Uh, I don't know what it all means. Um, but I think that Forensic Frenzy is going to end up interviewing the CEO of Garrett Discovery. And we'll be able to find out a little bit more about what this means, what the connections um, he has to the two victims, Maddie and Kaylee, based on this Garrett Discovery. So I think that's really interesting. Um, I don't know what you guys think and if you had even heard of it um, or anything like that. But if you haven't tuned into forensic frenzy i suggest you give it a try uh, give it a give her a watch so what what else guys anything else going on I'm just gonna look at some of your chats here and then said it was about certain words yeah we talked about that would a potential jury member let's see would a potential jury member be rejected as a juror as a result of the phone call survey. So yeah, so Bill, that was actually addressed because what um, the judge had said was he would want to, this was a funny part in the trial to me. The judge said that, well, those people would be, um, they wouldn't be able to be on the trial. And then it turns out that you can't just do that. You can't just exclude those people because they were part of the survey. You can't do that. Uh, and Rockstar Mazoth told him that. She let him know, you, no, you, you don't really have any basis for excluding those 400 people, and so you need to be careful because there's no statute code law that says these people took part in a survey voluntarily, and you're going to exclude them as a juror. They have a right to be a juror and be voir dire if they want to be. And so you shouldn't be doing that. So it turns out that um, they would not be rejected as far as we know. Um, there's nothing that would preclude them from doing that. And nor should they be. You ask them some questions, they give you their answers. Now, voir dire, they probably get rid of them because they would answer similarly in voir dire if they're being honest. So I don't know. Uh, let's see what else. Any other things here? <laughs> Court TV had a banner during one of Brian's hearings. Uh, just proved that all along with the citizens of the county, the judge and the state are biased. I mean, I think, well, you know, the other reason why I think this is very typical, I think, just with any criminal case that the person who's arrested is automatically presumed, right? They're presumed guilty because, oh, hello, Kelly. I think it's odd the Garrett documents don't specify time frame for which the data was pulled. I have a lot of questions. I do too, Kelly. I do, I do too, and I think it's an excellent question. One of the things that Forensic Frenzy mentions is that this document was produced the week that uh, he was extra, that Brian was extradited from Pennsylvania. Now, that doesn't, still doesn't answer the question though, which is what's the time frame that these relationships existed? And it doesn't tell us what the relationships are, right? So I agree with you. I, I have a lot of questions too. I don't know what it means. It does say two of the victims 
victims' names on there. But again, I don't know what it means. You know, I'm really hoping and looking forward to Forensic Frenzy interviewing, <clears throat> interviewing the CEO. Sorry. <laughs> like, it's like a nut over here. Let me get a drink. Sorry. I'm looking forward to Forensic Frenzy interviewing the CEO of Carrot Discovery. And if you've watched her, you know, she's going to ask him the questions. She's not going to like pussyfoot around. She's going boop right between his eyes and be like this, this, and this. Yeah, I want to know like from what period of time is this data coming from? Super important to know that, right? Super important. Um, I would imagine that a company like Garrett Discovery that works has been you know, hired by and contracted by the, the government, the, the, the um, corporations, it's been around for a while, that when they're analyzing these things, that they're able to tell what accounts are catfished or shit posters or whatever. They're, in other words, they're not going to um, say that this is Brian Koberg's account when it was falsified and made up after he was arrested. They're not going to include those accounts i mean they're not you know these people um they're not just some like podunk little company you know like trying to get some clout like this is a this is a company with integrity this is their business they 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 help people in court proceedings and i i'm i'm i would be very surprised if they don't have answers for how they can validate that these these are in fact the defendants or whatever, you know, whoever's they are, whether it's Kaylee's or Brian's or whoever else's um, accounts, it still doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean anything until we know more details. I agree, Kelly. It's still very interesting. Um, so I'm hoping to find out more about that. Uh, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. But we do know now that he didn't stalk them. <clears throat> right. And what do some of the lists mean? Are they profile files? Are they just views? I view a lot of content. I don't follow because of agreed, agreed hundred percent. And I don't know what that is either. I don't know either. And that's what I, you might've gotten here before I went over it. I'm not sure, but yeah, I don't know what it means. And I will tell you that, um, I went and I looked up, like, if you look at the, the top, I'm not going to pull it back up right now because I think I clicked off of it. But if, if you want to go to it, you just, I'm just going to type it here just in case anybody wants to. It's not a link, but it's really easy to find it by just typing in Garrett Discovery, Brian Koberger PDF. If you just type that in to Google, it was boom. It was the first thing that came up. And it was from the actual company, Garrett Discovery. So it wasn't just like some link that somebody made up or something like that. Um, and then you can look at it yourself. You can see what's on there. But the, the first list is like incoming links, I think, or outgoing links. But there were a couple people in there that you could see on both. And I looked at them. One of them was I am cookie tea, right? I am cookie tea. And I'm like, that's weird. What is that? And I looked it up. And it was this beautiful black woman who was doing these regimens for her skin. She was like selling skincare products. She was in church. She was married. She was praising her husband. She was praising the Lord. It was, you know, she had, she seemed like a wonderful person, but okay. Like that doesn't make me think he's a killer. I, I just, it's weird. Right. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what it means. Great to see you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do. I appreciate it. Windchill. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't know what it means, right? Like, what does it mean? So that he follows her or he, he looks at her links. He's interested in skincare. I, I don't know. You should check it out though. Check out some of the usernames that are, that are on there and tell me what you think. Um, another one that I looked at was resident, I think it was a resident death or reaper death or something. All the posts are gone. There's nothing there. Okay. Um, another one I looked at, I did a copy paste for one of the Persian, uh, for one of the Persian 
uh, characters because I don't have that on my keyboard. I don't know how to do that. And that was strange because it came up as a, it came up as a movie actually. And it was a movie about a homosexual couple that were in love, a young homosexual couple that was in love. And um, it had the name of the person. And then it said that he was a movie character and he had a twin. And then it said, hashtag meta twin. I'm like, I don't need any more rabbit holes in this, in this thing. I, I there's too many rabbit holes in Idaho for don't get me started on meta twins, digital twins, um, movie characters. Like, please don't do this to me. <laughs> Go birds. Eagles, maybe? I don't know. Windchill. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, there was, like, there were just some interesting people on there that, is mixed up in his whole social media algorithm, but none of them that I thought were particularly um, something that I would say, Oh, like this looks like somebody who is going to commit some horrible crime. One of the, there was one thing. And again, I definitely urge you to uh, go ahead and look at forensic frenzy. Cause she does a better analysis of what she found. Oh, biologics. Okay. Got it. Um, she does a better analysis of this um, because, and there are some more things you can find on the Garrett Discovery where they basically say that his social media profile analysis was similar to, I think it was the Las Vegas shooters, the guy who they quote, quote, did the Las Vegas thing. Um, uh, that makes me question a lot of things, guys. Uh, cause I don't know what you think about the Las Vegas thing, but I know what I think about the Las Vegas thing. And so for him to have a social media profile that's similar to that, uh, I have thoughts about that. So, yeah. And then there was one other person, but essentially they were saying, yeah, it is Kelly. I know. Right. Mm hmm. Yep. And, and so they said it was him. And then one other person, there was another person, which is another type of situation like that, Kelly, another type. So I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I, I can't do that. Like I, I mean, I can, I, I can, and I probably will. Cause I've already thought about it, but I just don't want to like, please don't do that now. So anyway, bottom line is, um, but their analysis of that person and the other person, and again, forensic frenzy. I'm sorry, I, I can't remember the name. Yeah, it could have been Winchell. I mean, it's possible that whole Hawaii disaster really uh, hits close home to me. I used to live on Oahu and I love Hawaii. Maui is, as far as I'm concerned, the best island, the best island of the Hawaiian chains. They're all beautiful, but. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's a lot to uncover there. Right. And I, I'm talking around it because, you know, YouTube, although disclosure has been much easier on YouTube as of late, I, you know, I like being here, so I don't want to say certain things that they're going to throw me off. Um, oh, the promoter from Las Vegas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-oh, did you just connect something? You connected something, Winchell. <laughs> so Garrett Discovery decided to say, and I have no bones to pick with Garrett Discovery. I mean, I, I, they seem like they're, you know, they're doing their job. It's legit. It's interesting that Inside Edition requested them to do an analysis and, and they did it. It's, it's interesting, right? Can I request they do an analysis? I have, I have a Linda Lean footage I'd like them to now analyze for me. Um, oh, you're jealous because of, yes, Hawaii was, oh my gosh, I loved it there. I only moved because, um, I only moved because it was, um, it was expensive and I was there because the person I was with was in a, a doctor program and he was very arrogant and he got kicked out of his doctorate program because he was so arrogant. And so we had to leave. 
but yeah, I was there for a year and I loved it. it. People in Hawaii are very, very friendly at the time. Anyway, I've been back a few times since, but, uh, lost, lost the, the series or lost. I'm going to go to Hawaii. Just, oh, lost is one of my favorite, my favorite all time favorite series. And I've not been back to Hawaii since I watched lost and it's absolutely one of my favorite series. And if you haven't seen The Leftovers, which is a, another series that was written by the same people who did Lost, you should check it out because The Leftovers was amazing. I hate the name because it's kind of silly. and Not silly. I just feel like it doesn't do the show justice because it sounds like leftover food in the fridge. And it's nothing about that. The Leftovers is, it's really good. Uh no, I wonder what. Yeah, the left, I'm telling you. The, the Yeah, I don't know much about the LDS church. Yeah. I feel like they're just like everywhere that's where there's like some money and stuff, like a lot of those kind of churches. But the leftovers, highly recommend if you're a Lost fan. If you're a Lost fan, because, you know, Lost is one of those shows where it's – it kind of can leave you hanging like lost. The end didn't bother me. I'm one of those people. The ending of the Sopranos didn't bother me. Like I'm okay with uncertainty. I can fill in the blanks myself and figure it out. So the leftovers, uh, oh, it's one of my favorite series. Yeah. But anyway, so, um, yeah. So back to the Garrett discovery though, I just want to make this one point. One of the things that they said when they tied all of that together, right. Was, um, not only the, the Las Vegas shooter and one other person I can't remember was that he did the same thing that those two men did, which was objectify women. He objectified women because he followed, I guess, a lot of accounts of women that were showing body parts off, which I mean, listen, the fact that they made that statement, I think, is probably meaningful because it's coming from their analysis. I don't think they make a statement like that lightly. Um, but I'm also going to say that some of those accounts, I'm telling you on that page, on that page, you should go and look <clears throat> on the Garrett discovery and just look up some of those Instagram accounts. A lot of them, a lot of them have to do with skincare and stuff like that. There's a lot of pages from other countries. And there's a lot of references to bow legs, bow legs. Okay. Right. You know, what bow legs are, there's like knock need and bow legs. Right. Um, which brings me to something else that's very weird and interesting. And I hadn't brought this up before, but I'm going to now because, well, why not? There's nothing to save it for. It's just something I found a long time ago. And you want to talk about a rabbit hole. Well, here's a rabbit hole. One second, if I can find it here. This was the weirdest thing. One of the weirdest things I've seen in this case, guys. I mean, I've seen a lot of weird things. Um, this one was pretty strange. So I, I go on to different forums. Like I'll go into 4chan archive and I'll look at, you know, I'll look at like, I'll do search words. Yeah. Bo, yeah. Bo like it. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. It is a genetic trait. Mm -hmm. So you guys are, you guys ready for this one? It's going to be weird. I'm just telling you right now, it's going to be weird. Uh, Okay, Kelly, I know you're going to like this one. So I like to go into different forums and just do searches, right? So you go into a 4chan archive and you just put at the top, you know, I've done this too many times. I don't need to do anymore. But you put in like Brian Koberger or you put in Amanda Koberger or you put in Melissa Koberger or you put in Enon Harsh or you put in Bill Thompson or you just put in whatever you want to put in and you just see what pops up, right? And in general, you know, you're going to find all the threads and, you know, you, you may find an isolated thread, but you, in general, at this point, you're not going to find anything from before the Idaho four and any of these things. Cause you know, let's face it, like alphabets. Oh, really? A guy at the grub chuck was bow legged. You know, that sounds interesting. Okay. I'm going to have to look at that now. 
So I do this on these forums. Okay, guys, you guys may, might do weird stuff like this too. Well, I did this on a forum called Godlike Productions. It's a really cool forum. It's kind of like 4chan, not as dangerous, still have not posted on there. <laughs> not going to do that. But I did that on there. And one of the searches I ran was Enon Harsh, right? Let's wonder what will come up for that. Well, what came up was one of the most bizarre threads I've ever read anywhere. So let me just find it. And let me tell you the story. Sorry, I'm not trying to keep you in suspense. I just want to find the whole thing because I don't want to. Uh, this this shit just really messed up. And let me preface this by saying I'm not saying Enon Harsh has anything to do with anything. Okay. I'm just saying that when he first came onto the scene and he was being interviewed and all these things, he definitely was an interesting character and I was just trying to find out what he was all about. Okay. And I have my own opinions about him that I'm not going to expound on, but let me just go and find what I found so I can read this to you and you guys can then have this on your head too. Okay. <laughs> Cause it's weird shit. Um, um, da -dum, da -dum. Oh, please let me find you now. And here's the thing too, and I'll, and I'll preface it before I read it. Just because I understand, I'm not naive. I understand that people LARP. I understand that people make up threads and try to, you know, sell theories. I understand there's disinfo, there's misinfo. I understand all of these things. I get all of that, right? I get all that. Because I get all that. I will say, right, I will say that when you know that people do that and you've been looking at these things for a long time, like I have for probably seven or eight years now in these types of threads, it becomes much easier to spot the ones that are shitposting and the ones that are communicating with someone about something that's may be true or is true, right? Now, this really like piqued my interest and I'm going to read it right after I'm done this. It piqued my interest because it was bizarre. And when I went back to look at it further, after I spoke about it to somebody on Twitter, it was erased, all of it, all of it. And there was a lot, a lot of back and forth. And I mentioned it. Hey, sipping on, you're going to like this one. You're going to like, you joined at just the right time, sipping on. You joined at just the right time. All right, so I'll do a quick recap for sipping on, then I'm going to read it. Do you know about, I do not tinsel TQ, but I'm, I'm interested. I'll take a look and see what that is. So, all right, so guys, here, here's a quick recap for sip, okay? All right. I go on forums, 4chan archive, different forums, search words, try to find threads, interesting things. I understand they ship post. I'm pretty good at discerning if they're ship posting or not, although I don't know for sure. I went on one called Godlike Productions. This was over a year ago. I did Enon Harsh as a search word. I'm about to read you what I found. This could be ship posting. Either way, it's it's like it's peak ship posting if it is. Okay, so the person says, the fact that you are still harassing me with men shows again yesterday was not as bad for you as I thought. You're still playing these games, so get ready for the effigy soon. The person says, you have nothing planned to undo anything today. You have men planned to be there and people plan to be watching me. You don't actually want to undo things to make it better unless it's an opportunity you can use against me. You need another day of effigies until you understand doing for me exactly the way you do for others. And he goes on and on. Okay. And then he says, he's really upset with this person and he's just going to keep burning a bunch of effigies. This guy really likes to do effigies. He likes to do LSD. And he says, 
it makes sense. Live in replace Jezebel and Sophia and maybe one day, but the mystery replacement is no longer necessary when the marijuana psychosis is gone. And I don't want them as entities as of now. And then he comes out. I had to get food. I'll continue to effigy and make progress. I have to eat and smoke more. And then this other guy comes back. So Enki works as alien minister in Beetlejuice, but at the same time, there is now Lydia and she might not be necessary anyway comes back so i made it to being teddy ruxpin and the girl owns me in the tapes and books that go along with me so this guy who's writing thinks that he is in a movie he thinks he's a move inside of a movie and that's what he's talking about okay tinsel tq you're gonna like this then you ready Effigy Desecrator said, when you go public about me, you're also going to go public that there are others who are the entities and it's going to be about them also. And I don't know who will be involved yet or how, but there are going to be others to vouch for and side with me like the four horsemen and it would be death. But his reputation is now shit like Hades. When you go public about me, when you go public about me, when you go public about me. You're also going to go public about the others involved who are essentially wizard boys, wife beating microwave zap shills with tech skills. That sounds like an order, not a request. What if all the others involved at your behest turn state's witness on you instead to save their sorry black satellite owned asses? Don't get off that high horse or the stage there. Okay. Now the satellite reference is interesting to me because there was a bunch of AI articles that were put out on this case and you can find them on 4chan archive and other places where they say her sorry her sorry boyfriend had a satellite turned upside down and this is a game of satellite being played the satellite reference has been made quite a bit in this case okay but we're getting to the good part okay yeah she can visit her family i'm sure that's going to be the first thing on her mind is when she gets to go back to Brooklyn. Here we go. You go first and tell the audience about astral tubing and how the fuck you're, how you fucked your neck up and why you walk like bow-legged Enon Harsh. Why is this guy talking about Enon Harsh, guys? <laughs> I mean... I don't know. Maybe they just mentioned him because whatever, but they're bringing Ian on harsh into it. And they talk about state's witness. The, one last thing I'll say about this, because trust me, there's a lot, there's a lot, but this was interesting. You can't go state's witness if there's no case to testify for or no use for your testify or testimony or evidence and you have neither except for cases against yourselves now the same way it's been kept quiet and will continue to do so and no one wants it public other than the people who are responsible for everything bad that happened because they think it will distract from them no one is going to even do anything to go public about this on their own to my knowledge how about i effigy dog girl for the insight and then basically he says, um, he says, you seem to think you're above the law or that an ankle monitor won't look good with Indian Paisley socks. And lastly, he says, um, the person's not going to be able to call, like uh, essentially uh, cause him any harm because he, if he were to, to tell the public yeah, this person is responsible for whatever crimes. And I'm not saying it has anything to do with Idaho. I just thought Enon Harsh was interesting that he was brought up. But, you know, he's basically saying, like, you're never going to be able to prosecute me. Because when you tell people these were the crimes I committed, they're not going to believe you when you tell them how I did it. Um. And yes, it's definitely apocalypse because it says, uh, well, there's the thing with seven women being the seven seals on the scroll in Revelation. So they go into the apocalyptic stuff. Um, I want to find that one line, though, when he says, 
I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell, say that yes, it's going to go public. Eventually the focus is just not going to be on the mess you made. The focus is going to be on the ramifications of what you've been trying to stifle. What you care about has only been holding back the flood of what's really important. And I am above any law that I didn't break or that doesn't actually exist or that I already have immunity from the government for, if that's what you mean. So really freaky shit, guys. So yeah, bow-legged, in on horse and harsh. I have no idea what it means, but I just wanted to put it out there because if anybody knows what it means or if anybody else wants to take a stab at it, I don't know. Let's see what you guys are saying. Are you saying this girl sounds nutty? I'm all about, yeah. Godlike production's good, right? Yeah. They have some good stuff on there. That's code. Yeah. I mean, it for sure seems like they're writing in code. Um, it's gone now. That whole conversation gone if you go and search in on harsh to find that whole thread it's all gone i mentioned it to one person on twitter i'm not going to say who and then the next day i went back now i'd already recorded all that and it was gone so i thought that was interesting uh if i'm al if i'm alarmed if you're alarmed so am i well, i'm not alarmed <laughs> I don't know if you're talking about me being alarmed. I mean, I'm not necessarily alarmed. I'm just, it's just odd, you know, it's just odd. And, um, they talk about astro tubing, you know, and he talks about marijuana psychosis and he talks a lot about movie characters. I mean, I didn't read a lot of that. I don't want to bore you guys with it. It's just a lot. It's a lot. Um, it's really trippy. And the guy is talking about being inside of different movies and di playing different roles and astro tubing and tripping balls on acid. Right. Windchill. That's exact. That's what I'm saying. You know, that that's exactly how I feel about this. You know, that's exactly how I feel about this windchill. And so that's why I feel like, like peripherally, this is some sort of, thing that ties in but i'll never know how nor would i really necessarily want to know how because i don't want to be on anybody's you know there's nothing i can personally do about it you know it's too way larger than any one person like even this person is saying that's apparently astro tubing and tripping balls with teddy ruxpin <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm not interested in doing that um and, uh, you know, they're, they, I know that they do these sort of things. I mean, astral travel is one thing. Astro tubing, is that actually being in the physical body on the astral plane? I'm not sure that I want to know about that. And I'm not interested in that either. That sounds a little bit too, too much for me. This is what happens when I talk about stuff, guys. I really go there. Big guys are probably, no, they're not on 4chan anymore. And this wasn't 4chan. This was Godlike Productions. This was godlike productions and you know 4chan is not the same as it used to be I, and i know that pre or post 2016 you know 4chan is not the same 4chan you know it's totally different i feel like 4chan was like taken over completely by you know alphabet agencies and stuff i mean i'm sure they were always there but now it's like i just i feel like it's like I don't want, you know, I'm not going to shit talk 4chan because there's still people in there that I wouldn't mess with. And I don't post on 4chan. I just go and I read stuff. Yeah, GLP. That's where that was from. Teddy Rex can remember the funny tiger. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. But he. the thing is, is when, I, and like I said, I didn't read all of it. He's, he really gets, this person is really getting to the characters and how this person is going to play this character. And he doesn't mention the names, but he's going to like, the, the dog girl is going to play, you know, this this person in the in the movie next. And then I'm going to effig effigy her. And he's like effigying everybody. I'm like, my God. So, yeah. So anyway, that's all I got, guys. I hope you found this live interesting. And I will be back again tomorrow. I'm going to try to keep going live every day at like 730-ish. Just to sort of do a wrap up on interesting news of the day. Mainly pertaining to Idaho. But also just to other interesting things in the world. 
Uh, one last thing I'll mention, um, cause you guys all seem like you may be interested in this follow is archaics. I don't know if you know who this is. I'm going to put his name in the chat. Not sure if you're familiar with this person, uh, but I highly recommend him if you don't follow him. Uh, archaics. Yeah. Nice to see you guys too. I'm just, I'm grateful anybody comes and hangs out with me and listens. So thank you. Archaics. If you guys haven't checked him out, you should. I think he's a great follow and very, uh, very bright, very extremely well read. And I would, he's, Oh, right. Yes. Got, got it. Archaics. We, we got an error in here. Okay. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I always try to like, just like throw that out there when I can, because I feel like, you know, I, he just need, people need to know about him if they don't. Cause he's just like, yeah, he's something else. So anyway, all right guys. Well, I'm going to peace out tonight, but I'll be back tomorrow, 7.30 live. And hope to see you then. And if not, catch you on the replay or something. And uh, if you want to talk about anything in particular in the comments section of the video, just, you know, write something. If there's anything in particular you want to talk about, Eagles football. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.